It's my pleasure to introduce for the first talk uh, Larry Peltonen, and he will tell us about uh, how he is learning ZK and what he has been suffering through <laughs> to, to do so. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, so I, I will document my journey a little bit here about what, I have, what, are, what have been pain points and basically how I have been learning. So we have a limited amount of time, so let's just dig into it. Uh, short intro. I've been doing maybe some five years of Ethereum development. Then I found this thing called StarkNet, and I found that there's this thing called Zero Knowledge. And then I found that, okay, there's privacy and all that stuff. So I got into uh, ZK stuff maybe about a year ago. Uh, nowadays, I'm a, I'm a freelancer doing, trying to do ZK stuff with various amount of success and then some EVM development. So my aim is to bridge the gap between the business people and the heavy core researchers who do the hard work. So I'm somewhere in the be between. So just kind of like a, as a disclaimer, we are all a bit different. We learn differently. So whatever works for me, how I learn it might not work for you at all. So I will try to give a few different options like how you can, how you can try to learn. But basically, you just have to figure out what works for you. So I think for all the learning, whatever you do, you just need the right motivation. Like if you, if you go home and your mom tells you to, to do something like special, or maybe today, your mom tells you to learn ZK, maybe that's not the best mot motivation. So figure out what, why you want to do this. Is, what, what is the motivation? What, what drives you? Do you have like uh, ambitions or what kind of goals you have? So maybe you are looking for a new job in the ZK sector, or you have some projects in your existing job. Maybe you have a Web2 job, a Web3 job. Maybe you don't know anything about ZK, but you want to have some privacy there, and you're like, okay, this might be a cool thing. Let's, let's add some ZK stuff here to add privacy. Or then you just, you're just interested in you have, want to use your free time. For example, you have some side projects. I have this great idea, but I'm not going to get paid to do it. So maybe you just do it as a side project. Or then you just start, I don't know, a little bit weird and just do it for fun. That's like good, good, good weirdness, but like it's not, not many people do it just for fun. So I, I kind of like to categorize these learnings into kind of three different categories. Uh, if we start from the bottom, there's the use cases. Like this is the stuff everyone basically learns the first things. Like you read, like what is this CK and what can it be used for? Oh, there's privacy and there's succinctness and then like oh, so, so I didn't quite understand what is CK. Oh, Alibaba cave example. Oh, where's Waldo and this example? You go through these all these phases and that's totally fine. That helps you understand like something about what is CK and how it works. But then if you want to go a kind of like a step deeper. You might, you, maybe you're a developer already, you want to try to write some ZK stuff, you go to, go check what kind of languages there are, you maybe, okay, let's pick this language, maybe I, maybe I write something, or maybe you research some languages. Maybe you want to write some program, some ZK program. That's maybe the next step, and that is still pretty easy. But maybe what I'm focusing here, here is the, the hard part, the red part, the mathematics and the theory part. Uh, that's the really hard part. Uh, in my opinion, most people don't really have to care about this part. But for some, if you come to these kind of conferences, I think 80% of the talks are like new folding schemes or new research for Lasso or something. And it's really hardcore research and theoretical part. But I think like 90% of people don't have to care about that stuff. The point of this kind of different programming languages is that they abstract all of it away. So don't, bet, don't get scared if you just hear about these research, research things here. And if you get there to the top of the pyramid, then you're like, good for you. Uh -huh. So uh, something about the theory studies, it's going to be hard. If you want to go there, it's going to be hard. But we have all done it. We have all started from zero. So just try to learn something, like whatever materials you read. You read maybe some articles or watch some video, videos. You will not understand most of it. Maybe sometimes you will not understand anything. But just try to pick some pieces, and eventually the puzzle will kind of like come together. It will take time. 
And uh, I think there is a big gap. Like at the top, we have the cryptography stuff. Like that's the stuff we are here. But like 80% of the lectures are about this stuff. And but that, that's not what, what I think. Like no, most of you should learn. So and then there's there's the use cases like the Alibaba cave and these kind of things. But whenever you find some resources for learning ZK, I think the mo most difficult part is figuring out like will this be the right level for me? Like sometimes you start reading an article, oh this is very good, I understand. And then the next chapter goes into something like weird and you have no idea what they're saying. So what, what is missing is this like middle layer like making ZK understandable for people. So uh, what I would su suggest, uh, you can do it all alone, it's totally fine, but I would suggest you just do it with some other people. Maybe you used to uh, join a study group or go to some hackathons, try to hack something and maybe you will meet some smart people or chat with people, uh, uh, make some friends even. And uh, just, if you're on Twitter or whatever, X, just post your progress and someone will maybe comment, oh, this is good stuff, but you could do it like this. And then, like, ah, I learned something new today. And it's, it's like eventually it's also kind of much more fun to, fun to rant with someone, to, uh, someone else. Like if you're just alone, it's not so much fun, fun to rant to yourself. And uh, as with any learning, just it's, it's fine to be stupid. Uh, we all started from zero, so just go ahead and ask the stupid questions. I hope someone will ans answer with something reasonable, sometimes not, but uh, I hope someone might. This is, from, this is how we learn. And once you understand something, you could uh, apply it. Maybe start writing a little bit of some code. Uh, maybe you use some like ready framework which generates things for you. Maybe it generates proof for you already. Maybe it generates a verifier code already and some parameter files. And you will be making mistakes, and that's totally fine. Like a well, lot, like I did. Like I was like, okay, there's a verifier parameters, and I give them to the prover, and like I get lots of errors, and like oh, oh that was a stupid mistake. But that's that's how we learn. So I think like it's a mixture. Like if you just do the theory part, like you might get bored. But some people don't, but you might get bored if you just like learn and learn and learn. So just go apply what you learned, and okay, this works like this, and then you, then you maybe go study a little bit more. So just do it all together, and I think it's uh, much more much more fruitful to do it at the same time. So uh, there's no one right answer what works for you or what works for me. So if someone, someone likes videos, someone likes articles, someone likes whatever chats. So just try different things, like maybe today I read this article and tomorrow I watch this video. So just figure out what works for you. Maybe take a walk, like you have been studying for four, four hours now. Go, go outside and just refresh your mind and it does wonders usually. And maybe write some code and see some results, what, what's happening. So I think that the main, main thing where to start is basically you have to start what, about deciding what you want to learn. Do you, do, you, do you just want to learn the use cases? That's like quite straightforward and kind of easy. Do you want to do, do the like development? Okay, that's like still ra rather easy. But if you want to go to the hardcore mathematics and the theoretical part, that's going to be like challenging, but at least you know it. And everyone has gone through the same frustration. So don't be too hard on your, yourself. Learn something a little bit every day, and you'll get there eventually. Yeah, that's my lightning talk. Um, thank you very much, and also perfectly on time. So we do, <laughs> we do have time for questions. Uh, does anybody have questions about how to get into the CK? Everyone has learned everything already. Oh, yes. Hello, I have a question that if I have already got uh, some ideas of a ZK project, I then start to learn um, to, to, to do with this project. Then um, how to evaluate the idea? That's, um, uh, sometimes I, I, I feel struggling in uh, to find, uh, find relevant resources, I like started papers. Uh, uh, it Maybe it's easy to find papers, but uh, it's hard to evaluate uh, why such papers or, re or resources uh, um, uh, 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 
do really help to 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 our project to my own project. So how to evaluate the resources? How, how to how to seek and evaluate the resources and to and to support uh, our learning? Yeah. So uh, I think you should start by like figuring out: Do you even need zk? There are quite many use cases where you actually don't even need any zk stuff. Maybe you have some commit reveal scheme or something much easier. So and if you like figure out that okay, I need zk, then you. I, I would just go to someone who knows how things work and ask them, like, is this reasonable to do it this way? Does it make sense? You can, you can figure out by yourself, but it's, it takes a lot longer for you to kind of fight it all out. So just ask someone who knows. That's much easier. Sorry? One second. I mean that uh, you, you mentioned you mentioned that to just to ask someone is, is the best uh, option. But uh, uh, where to ask? In a group or in a chat or, or or somewhere else? Well, there's a, at least the organizers of this uh, event. They have the zk hack Discord. That's a pretty good place to start. At least zk hack Zoom, You mean that? Uh, there's a zk hack it, Discord server, it, and then there's a oh, zk hack Discord. I got yeah. Okay. And there's a Telegram channel, and that's full of like theoretical stuff. And oh, you can oh, ask for in these places at least. Oh, okay. Thanks a lot. I will join it soon. So maybe you can also say like a word or two about what was some of the, what were some of the most useful resources for you when you uh, started learning about zk. Yeah, I think there's no one right resource or one right answer. I think the Moon Math Manual is very good. I think there's like 300 pages of like full stuff. It starts from the very beginning and basics. And uh, I think that's my main resource mostly. But it depends what you want to learn. OK. Any further questions? All right, then let's thank Laurie again. Thanks a lot.